Hey guys, welcome to SRBC Facts. Today we will continue our advanced lightning series and today we will be discussing about using client side cache. So in today's session we will be seeing what are the advantages of using client side cache, where we should use it and where we should avoid using it and then in the end we will be seeing a demo as well and we will see around 40x better performance uh, of a lightning component which uses the client side cache. So without any delay let's start our session 2. So first of all, how to use client side cache. So in lightning framework, there is something called storable action, which allow us to store the response that we get from the server inside a client side cache or in a browser cache. So what you need to do, you just need to use this method, which is called set storable and on your action, which is making a server side call. So just use this method and all the response that you'll get from server will be stored on your browser cache. So before that, let's see when we should use the client side cache and when we should be avoiding using client side cache. So if you are making a read only call to server and you will not be doing any DML operation on the data which will be received from the server, we should use the cache here. And let's say if you are doing some DML operation or maybe like you are updating the data that you will get from server. So in that scenario, we should not use the cache mechanism because in that scenario, we need the real time data or actual fresh data. So maintain our data integrity in the in our backend system. You can always control the cache mechanism by using a ignore existing parameter, which is the part of set storable method. So just let's say if you want to control this cache mechanism dynamically within your code, just use this parameter in your set storable function and you should be able to you know control the uh, cache mechanism there. If you talk about the client side cache, we need to understand these two intervals. So there's refresh interval and there's expiration interval. So the refresh interval means till what time lightning framework should consider your data as fresh data. So let's say I just got my data from server and it has been stored on my browser cache. So for the next 30 seconds, if I request for the same data, my browser or my lightning uh, framework will consider this data as a fresh data and it will not go to the server to get this data again. But now there's again something called expiration interval, uh, which is 15 minutes. So what does this expiration interval means? So let's say if your data is 15 minutes older inside browser cache. So the lightning platform will completely disregard your cache and it will go to the server to make a fresh call and then it will get the data from the server. Now what happens between refresh interval and the expiration interval? Let's have a look at those uh, scenarios as well. So the first scenario that we have, let's say the cache itself is not stored in your browser machine. So what will happen in this scenario? Your component will request for the data. Your framework will uh, go to your browser to get the data. Now your browser will say, I don't have the data. Please go to Salesforce and fetch the data. So now in step four, your framework will go to the Salesforce. It will make a call to Salesforce. Once it will get the response from Salesforce for the data, it will store that data inside your browser cache. And then it will give a call back to your component where the data will be rendered on the UI. So this is what happens if the cache is not stored. A call will be made to the Salesforce server and the response will be stored on your browser cache. Let's say if the cache is already stored in your browser cache and it's less than 30 seconds old, which means it is less than the refresh interval. So in this scenario, the component will request for the data from your framework. Your framework will again go to your browser to request for the data. Now this time your browser will say, yes, I have the data, please take it. And uh, your framework will provide the response to the component and the data will be rendered on the UI. So if you see in this scenario, there's no call made to the server. So you will uh, save a complete request and response, uh, which is being sent to the Salesforce server here. Uh, all that data will be coming from your browser cache itself. Now there's another scenario where the cache is stored, but it is, uh, not a fresh data that means it uh, it's more than 30 second old but it's still less than your expiration interval that means still less than 15 minutes old so in this scenario your component will request for the data your framework will again go to your browser to request the same data now this time your browser will say okay i have the data please take it now in this step your framework will recognize that i have got the data but this is more than 30 second old which means it is not a fresh data but I don't want my user to keep waiting. So let's give this data to, to the user. And meanwhile, I'll make another call to server. 
So now in step four, your user will get a callback response, your component will get a callback response and the data will be rendered on the UI. But behind the scene, your framework will again go to the Salesforce to get the fresh data. And your Salesforce will provide the response with the fresh data. And now this fresh data will be stored on the browser machine and it will override the data which was there already. And now after storing the data on browser machine, the component will get another callback response. So in this scenario, you will get two callback response and whatever you are executing in your callback method will be executed twice in this scenario. So now let's have a demo of it and let's see the performance improvement we will get uh, once we will use the uh, client side cache. So let's see an example of client side cache mechanism here. So I have this application with me, which is kind of reading the account data from server and loading them inside a lightning data table using my custom component. So what this application is doing, it is rendering 15 accounts on each page and then we can go to the next page or the previous page based on our uh, requirement. So let's see how much time it is taking to load these 15 accounts from server. So if I go to page number 2, it has taken around 223 milliseconds to load those 15 accounts from the server. Let me go to page 3, then page 4, maybe like page 5. So every time it is taking like more than 200 milliseconds to load the data from server. But now since we already have this uh, page 1 to page 6 uh, loaded just a second ago, then should it take the same time when I go back to these pages? Let's see. Yes, if I go back to these pages again, it is again taking more than 200 milliseconds to load the data from server. So why is it happening? Because we are making a server side request on each and every page and we are not caching the data on the browser machine. So which we should do because this is completely a read only data and we are not doing any kind of DML operation on this data. So let's quickly see the code of this particular application. So what I'm doing in this application, I'm using my lightning data table to iterate over the set of account records and uh, rendering them inside the lightning data table. I have two buttons with me for previous and next page and then from these buttons I am making uh, another server call to get the latest data from server or to get the next data from the server. So if I, if I see my action here, so what this action is doing, it's simply going to my server, passing the page size and page number as a parameter and getting the response from server and again setting my data attribute here. So in this scenario, we are not caching the data on our browser machine, which we should do. So how we can do it, you can simply use the set storable function here, so which will ensure that you will store the results that will get from server on your browser machine. So once you have done it, let me save the code and let me refresh my page here. And then we will see the performance now. Okay. so. So if you see here, uh, the first page has taken around 350 milliseconds to load the data from server. The second page is again taking more than 200 milliseconds. And now I'm on page 5. So all the time it is taking more than 200 milliseconds to load the data from server. Now what happens if I go back to page 4 or maybe like page 3. So you see the time has been reduced to 12 milliseconds or 16 milliseconds from 200 milliseconds. So this is the advantage you will get from uh, client side cache. So if you store your data from the client side cache, there is no call being made to the server if your data is still fresh. That means still 30 seconds old. So this is all about this demo guys. So please use your browser cache or your client side cache whenever it is possible to get a better component performance. So if we are talking about the client side cache, we should not forget about the lightning data service as well. So LDS is what we call the standard controller for your lightning component and LDS has a strong cache mechanism inbuilt where when, whenever it makes a server side call and gets a response from server, it stores the uh, response inside, a, inside browser cache. And the advantages you will get with uh, LDS is once the response has been received from the server and uh, the response has been stored in your browser cache, this particular cache will be shared among all other different components which are requesting for the same data. So here even if like there are five to six different components requesting for the same data, there will be only one single call to the server and the response will be shared among all those five to six components. And if there is any modification being done between or in any of those five to six components, the modified data will be shared among all 
the different components which are using that particular data. So this is the advantage we will get with the Lightning Data Service. The only drawback that LDS has right now is it only operates over one single record. You cannot use multiple records using LDS. You cannot operate over multiple records. So there is more to it. You can also use your own custom cache mechanism where you can have the complete control over the cache. How do you want to share it among all different components? How you can store your cache? What is the refresh interval that you want to set? What is the expiration interval that you want to set? You can set all those things by yourself as well by building your own custom cache mechanism. And we'll be covering that as well in further sessions in uh, Lightning Advanced series. For now, this is all in this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video guys.